Right. <clears throat> okay, uh, so good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we're very pleased to welcome our very own Matt Ottaway, uh, who is a membership development advisor here at IOSH. Uh, he's kindly agreed to deliver this session, uh, and we'll shortly be handing over to him in a few minutes. Uh, we also have uh, Alison Hind joining us as well, uh, who is very much, <clears throat> very much the, uh, the driving force uh, behind these uh, Switzerland webinars. Uh, so she'll also give it a brief intro before I hand you over. So, um, but I do want to mention a few things. Uh, so firstly, for those of you who uh, haven't attended one of our uh, webinars before, uh, I'm Ben Pollard and I take care of uh, all of the technical aspects of these sessions. So um, if there are any problems at all, um, you can ask me and I shall try to assist as best as I can. So <clears throat> on your screen then, most likely located at the top left hand side, uh, you should notice a small bar which should have some written options which are Q&A and chat. If you have any, uh, any technical issues, uh, any problems at all at any time, uh, you can message me in the chat box uh, and I'll be able to respond to you. Um, likewise, if you have any questions for Matt uh, about the actual content of the session today and you want to ask those in writing, you can ask those in the Q&A box. Uh, <clears throat> at the end of Matt's presentation, uh, we'll go through a, an interactive Q&A session uh, where you'll be given the chance to actually ask Matt questions directly, uh, verbally, uh, but I'll explain more about this part uh, as and when we come to it later on in the session. Uh, so with all that said, uh, I'm now going to hand you over to Alison, uh, who's then going to introduce the session. So uh, Alison, over to you. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on professional development. Um, I very quickly wanted to say before we start what we have planned for the rest of the year. So um, September the 11th, date for your diary, James Pomeroy from Lloyd's Register is going to talk about making the simple way, no, making the safe way the simple way. Um, he gives lots of examples of what he's done within his large organization to improve safety culture and um, has had some really great results from that. So he'll share that with us. Then on October the 15th, um, we are very pleased that Nestle has invited us to visit their Nespresso site in Romont. So we're planning another face-to-face -face day for that um, time. Uh, so we'll be looking for three talks um, on a safety culture subject um, and a site visit around the Romont factory. So that will be uh, a great thing to go to. Then uh, in December, we've got Rob Shaw, who's going to do a webinar for us on slips prevention. So slips and trips and falls are one of the, the most common accidents that happen. Um, the OSHA statistics from the States said 15% uh, uh, of accidental deaths are caused by slips, trips, falls. So a real biggie. Um, it's second only to motor vehicles. But it's one of those difficult areas where um, it can be quite people don't like being wrapped in cotton wool, um, particularly in Switzerland where it's so strong on personal responsibility. So how you put that message across is really important. And Rob Shaw does it in a great way. He's an expert in this subject from um, the health and safety laboratories, the HSC laboratories. So he's worked for many, many years on um, looking at uh, how to prevent slips, trips, falls. So that looks a good one. Okay, so today we're going to talk about professional development and uh, Matthew is our speaker. He's from the membership development department at IOSH. Um, one of the, the great things that IOSH gives to us is a really clear path for professional development and that's based on the qualifications and the experience that we have. So there are a large number of qualifications and many of us within IOSH Switzerland will have ones that are not currently on the IOSH list. In fact, I, I think just having talked to Matthew earlier, there's only one Swiss qualification on his list. Um, so we need to go through a process where we get the IOSH, the, the, the Swiss qualifications um, in front of IOSH, that they can have a good look at them, they can put them on their approved list, and then people that follow on from us will find it a much uh, quicker, more straightforward process to find out where they fit into the membership structure, um, so if there's anyone there now watching this or, or people that you know who would like to submit their qualifications for approval and work with the standards and qualifications department at IOSH um, to, to, to put them into their structure, that would be really great. On the other side, we have a large number of people within uh, IOSH Swiss Network who have 
particularly um, British qualifications uh, and it can be difficult to get these recognised within Switzerland. So there is uh, the Federal Coordination Commission for Occupational Safety, it's the FCOS within SUVA are the people that you submit your qualifications to again for this sort of approval process. Um, if there's anyone who can talk to us about that, can give us some feedback about how that works and, and has tried that route, then that would also be interesting to hear from. Um, but I wondered if you had heard of uh, an organization called ENSHPO. It's the European Network of Safety and Health Professional Organizations. And IOSH is one of the organizations within this body. They offer a, a wonderful um, status which is European Occupational Safety and Health Manager or you can be a European Occupational Safety and Health Technician. So this is a European wide certification um, and again it's based on recognized qualifications. So um, IOSH because they're within that organization their qualifications are recognized. Um, it's something that I've been meaning to apply for for years uh, not got round to so I shall have a, a look into this and report back to the group on it. Just from reading through the website, it looks like, because I'm a chartered safety practitioner, um, I just have to send a certificate in, pay a one-off fee of 250 euros, and then 50 euros a year, and then I get an enormous number of letters after my name. Um, but a European recognized occupational safety and health manager qualification. Um, so um, I'll, I'll have a look at that and report it back to you. Okay, um, so thank you very much for coming to the webinar and I'd like to pass over to Matthew um, to talk to us about professional development within IOSH. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the IP webinar. My name is Matthew, as Alison and Ben have said there, and I'm from the professional development team. So just to give you information about what I, what I do. So at IOSH, it's my role to help members get to charter status where everyone starts off on the same level and then I guide them to technical graduate and charter status so I look at qualifications I look at where we can go and I help members get there so to kick off the webinar I'm going to go through a few slides about reasons to join IOSH and how to transfer your category of membership after the slides relating to category transfers I'm moving on to IPD which of course is what we're about today Please feel free to take notes during, as there is a lot of information here, but I'm happy to send the slides out to anyone who requests them. So I do try and sort of take breaks while speaking to give you a chance to take any notes you might have, like I say, but um, any requests the this uh, presentation, happy to send them out to you. So let's get started. So first of all, IOSH. <clears throat> It is the world's largest and only charter membership body for health and safety professionals. It's been going for over 70 years supporting health and safety professionals. Now I should say as well, for 70 plus years, it's also been a registered charity. This is a non-profitable organization. As you can see some statistics at the bottom there, there's over 47,000 members worldwide and that number is growing. It's over 120 countries, more than 10,000 delegates attend IOSH events every year. I should say, I think that number is actually for last year. So. Again, that changes, it goes up every year, as does the amount of members that we have. And we've chained 1,500 business leaders in leading safety, just one of the many Austria qualifications and training schedules there. So why join IOSH? So first of all, it would boost your employability. Alison has mentioned having those names as a big part of those initials next to her name. So having for example the charter membership or cmi osh next to your name it shows people that you are at the top of your profession that you're head and shoulders above everybody else you're recognized immediately um our members are internationally recognized as the benchmark of professional excellence in occupational safety and health so i mean the point really today is it's not just about uk members it's not just uk this is a worldwide organization maximize your potential with cpd cpd really is a fantastic tool to use i mean it can be looked at as a diary it's really a way of organizing yourself or looking at your accomplishments what you've done and what you plan to do how you've where you've come from and where you're going that's really a purpose of cpd 
and also enhance your knowledge through networking. The networking side of things really is the best part of Varsh, in my opinion, to be perfectly honest with you, as of course the Swiss network we have today, another example of people being able to network and that's what it's really all about, connecting people worldwide. So speaking of the networks, there we go, the top point there. Again, why join IOSH? Build your network and connections. And that's, again, another fantastic thing we've got about the Swiss network, is the fact that people are out there being able to connect to each other. People are just getting their foot in the door of health and safety. You can use your network to meet people in the same sector, meet people who have been there for a long time and ready to talk to you about what, what can be done. And at the second point there, the emerging Swiss network to meet other safety professionals, as I was just saying, to meet people to really help yourself uh, get going and I mean it's, it's great to talk about it as well there's always something new in health and safety and having a network really allows you to share that information our sector specific groups span a wide range of industries from aviation to sports grounds and events so that's just like I say it doesn't matter what kind of area of health and safety you specialize in there's always someone there and that's a fantastic part about the groups about the networks as well Join the debate on our social media platforms and website forums. As you can imagine, there's always a debate in health and safety. We see uh, plenty of fiery comments, of course, on there. It's always good to have people to share those thoughts and those ideas. I should say, excuse me throughout, I get a dry throat doing these, so I'll be sipping water as we go on. <clears throat> right, okay, so your journey with IOS starts here. Paths to career progression and success. Now, for those of you who already are IOSH members, you already know that everyone starts off as an affiliate member, as you see there on your screen, the green box. Everyone, it doesn't matter what qualifications you've got, what experience you've got, or whatever it may be, you will start off as an affiliate member. Once you've joined, we'll then ask you to send your qualifications to us. Now, again, thank you again to Alison for mentioning the fact that unfortunately this time there's only one Swiss qualification that I'm aware of that we accept. That doesn't mean we will only accept one. It is one that is known at this time. So when it comes to qualifications, we ask members to send in what you have along with a CV or resume, and we'll take a look at that and allocate you to the appropriate section. So first of all, associate membership. That is somebody who has a level three qualification in occupational health and safety, but doesn't have an amount of experience. If you have that qualification, but you also have two years of experience minimum, then you can move on to technical membership. If you have a level five or a diploma level qualification, then you'll move straight across the graduate membership. So you don't have to go through every step. You don't have to go associate, tech, grad, whatever it may be. You can leave straight away. And that brings me on to the Swiss qualification, which is called the Training for Future Occupational Safety Professionals. Now, that is a qualification that will get you straight towards graduate membership. Again, like I say, you do not have to be an associate member or a technical member, you go straight to graduate. As a graduate member, you can then enroll on IPD, which I'll be talking about in just a few moments. Now, IPD, or I should say, stands for Initial Professional Development. It is the process that you must go through to become a chartered member. It doesn't matter what qualifications you have, you must go through to become chartered. Then we see there, both chartered member, we have chartered fellow. I won't talk about chartered fellowship much, and the reason for that is because it does take five years uh, of charter membership to become a charter fellow and that's a whole other kettle of fish it's a whole other route really and it, it, it could possibly change by the time we've been uh, chartered for five years to be honest with you so um we'll move on to ipd so why first of all why become a charter member why go through ipd what can it do for you so benefits of becoming a charter member, credibility within your organization. I don't, I mean, within, and that is true. I prefer to say as well, credibility for your organization. An organization having a charter member connected to it, it shows people the organization takes health and safety seriously. If you've put the effort forward to actually have somebody there with you that's a chartered member, then people know that that organization really takes the health and safety seriously. Improve your ability to influence decision makers. Again, that goes to the fact that if someone's a chartered member, people know what they know, that individual knows what they are talking about, that they are at the top of their game and they should be listened to. And that goes alongside the next point there. Work on an equal footing with other professionals. Again, people know that you're the person that knows what, they, what they're talking about. And of course, it increases your future employability. Having that knowledge, having that experience, it puts you your, your CV to the top of the pile and lets people know this person's a chartered member, they know what they're doing. 
Right, so IPD, Initial Professional Development. It is an assessment process that graduate members need to go through in order to become a charter member. And as I said before, that excludes nobody. You must be a graduate member to do IPD. The point of IPD is for you to demonstrate your competency, your knowledge, your skills, and your experience. There are more than two routes, I should say, but it's just that it says there, there are two IPD assessment processes, which is absolutely correct. There are two processes, but there are various routes to charter, which we'll come to in a moment. So the two processes are electronic skills development portfolio, which is a practical assessment process, and an electronic open assessment exam. We'll go into these in more detail in a moment, but just a very quick overview. The skills development portfolio, I don't know if anybody uh, here, of course, today has any experience with an NVQ, but it is similar to an NVQ. If you don't know what an NVQ is, it's evidence-based information. So you're uploading information to your own online portfolio to prove you've done certain aspects, have certain experiences within health and safety. The open assessment exam as a theory-based assessment is really what it sounds like. It's an online exam. You don't have to attend anywhere or go anywhere in particular. It's an online exam. You can do it at home or at work. But like as I say, it's an exam. We'll come into the, onto the details of it in just a moment. Okay, so the idea of a chartered member of IOSH is to be a full-rounded occupational safety and health professional. So if we start to the left side there, accredited theory-based qualification completed. So if you have a theory-based qualification, the idea is you'll be asked to do a practical-based process as part of your IPD. So you've got your theory-based, so asking you to do practical-based. You've done an exam, so asking you to do a more hands-on approach for IPD, and that's what the skills development portfolio is. Looking to the other side, if you have an accredited practical base qualification, such as, as I said before, an NVQ, uh, something that's more hands-on approach, then you're asked to do a theory-based process as part of your IPD. And then, of course, when it comes together, as a full-rounded safety professional. And at the bottom there, it says some members may need to complete both IPD processes. That depends on their qualification. Again, we'll come to that in just a second, but it all comes down to the qualifications. So the three main routes to chartered membership, you see there are one, two, three, there are three routes there. There are more routes, to be honest with you, but they're, they're very rare. We stumble upon them very rarely. Um, to give you an example of one, uh, but I'll be honest, it, it won't really, it wouldn't really affect it. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you one more actually, or route four. Um, we'll come to that afterwards. I'll tell you about route four, actually, just give you an example of that there are more, but these are the three main ones that we're really to focus on. So route one, a graduate member with an accredited degree or diploma you will need to maintain your CPD, complete a skills development portfolio, and then complete a peer review interview. Route two, somebody with a, who is a graduate member, beg your pardon, with a level four or five NVQ or SVQ or any other practical based qualification within health and safety, similar to route one, you ask to complete, beg, beg your pardon, maintain your CPD, complete the open assessment, and complete the peer review interview. Route three really is similar to a combination of one and two. So you have what we call a cognate degree. Now a cognate degree is a qualification that is not entirely health and safety related. Um, I think the best example of one that I stumble across more often than not is probably an environmental qualification that someone may have. Environmental management, uh, I tend to see every now and then. Um, yeah, I think that's probably the most common one. So if you have an environmental qualification, you tend to find that there is at least 50% health and safety, but it is not a full health and safety qualification. So we do accept it. It does make you a graduate member, but you're asked to do both. As you can see, complete a skills development portfolio, complete an open assessment, and as before, maintain your CPD and complete a peer review interview. So there's more involved because the qualification is not completely health and safety related as i said route four route four is something when someone has a um, a csp i don't know if anybody is a csp member here at all uh, but it's a different route you you do a different kind of open assessment route to charter membership but that's just an, an, another example but um, again that's a canadian route so again it, it's doubtful but like i say just to say there is different routes but these are the three that everyone here today i expect will be seeing 
So let's go into a bit more detail about these routes. So first of all, the skills development portfolio or electronic skills development portfolio. It is an evidence-based assessment process. It's produced online via your My IOSH login and you'll go via My IPD. Choose seven criterions from five elements. I can't go into each of them now, as you can imagine, they're quite robust. But please, if anyone wants a copy of what the skills development portfolio is like, the criterions, the elements, send an email. We will drop this down to membership at iosh.com and I'll be happy to send that out to you. What myself or my colleagues, they picked that up instead of me, simply request the skills development portfolio or SDP criterion sheets and we can send that to you so you can take a look at what's involved. It's evidence uploaded of work completed electronically. And evidence can be no older than two years old. And that's a popular question that we get about that. So when it comes to uploading your evidence, it can be no longer than two years from the day you are uploading it. Not from the day you joined IOSH or the day you expect to finish, whatever it may be. The moment you're uploading that piece of information, it can be no longer than two years old. Now it takes two to three weeks for a criterion to be assessed. We have assessors assigned, excuse me, uh, by IOSH, and uh, it, we give them two to three weeks to mark. Generally, they are quicker than that, but two to three weeks is the amount of time before we chase them to say, can you hurry along, so to speak. And of course, at the bottom there, maintain your CPD throughout the IPD process. It's always a good idea to stay on top of your CPD throughout, otherwise there's some catching up to do. So that's the skills development portfolio. Now looking at the electronic open assessment. Now. The open assessment runs nine times a year. The way it works is it runs each month of the year with an exception to April, June and December. So it's nine times a year. The reasons for those dates is that generally speaking, we don't have the resources to manage the open assessment during those months. So we just put them aside, otherwise it can get a bit messy. So we just do every month except for June, April and December. The exam is open for 14 days. So what that means is each month, uh, as I say before, the ones that are available, there is a two week window for the open assessment exam. Now, when you start that open assessment exam, moving on to the next point there, there you have seven days to complete it. So you've got a two week window and you start it, you start part A, as you can see, there are two parts of the exam, part A. You start part A and then your seven days begins. You have to complete the exam within seven days. So again, moving on, <clears throat> excuse me. Two parts of the exam, part A, 48 multiple choice questions with a three hour time limit. Now, that's your standard tick box exercise, really, you may say. You've got your questions, you read your question, please tick the appropriate answer, move on. And that's it. Three hours to complete it. And once you have completed it, part B begins. With part B, you don't have to start it immediately. You do have the rest of your seven days to complete it. My advice to anyone doing the open assessment is to look at part B, read the questions that you have been given or you've been allocated, and consider if it's a good idea to start right away or if you need to do some research first. After going through part A for around two to three hours, you may feel you a bit fed up really you've had enough of doing exams for now you want to put it down from it maybe just leave it for, for now and then and return to it the following day you do not have to of course it's up to you but the fact is you don't have to rush it straight away don't forget you have seven days another piece of advice is please use those seven days for the second part um i had an experience well, quite a while back now i suppose you might say as a um a professional was on the phone to me and he uh, enrolled on the open assessment and the next day, phoned up saying, well, was that it? And he, that individual, unfortunately, was not successful because he, he rushed it, rushed straight through it, thinking he could do it, no problem at all, didn't go through his answers correctly, didn't research correctly, and was unfortunate that it didn't, didn't pass. So it's important to make sure you use that time that you've been allocated. Okay, so the results. Now, part A, as I said before, is instant. You are told immediately if you are successful. And provided you are successful, you can move on to part B. When you've completed part B, you are given your results or told if you're being successful or not 14 days after the closing date. That's not the date you finished, but the closing date of the open assessment. So the end of the 14 day period, I should say. And again, maintain your CPD throughout the IPD process. 
So the CPD audit, now you've completed your open assessment and or your portfolio, what happens next? So you've been advised of your results, you receive an email, dear Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so, you've completed the open assessment, next stage is to audit your CPD. So once you have successfully completed your RPD assessment process, a CPD audit will be carried out on your online record. The CPD audit is to verify that you've been updating and maintaining your knowledge and skills as a health and safety professional. Please ensure the following has been updated. Now, I'm not going to go into too much information about the CPD today, of course, because this is an IPD webinar. If you have any CPD questions, please ask them afterwards or give me a call because the CPD is a webinar in itself. There's so much information on the CPD. But when it comes to the audit, the auditor will look for the following piece of information. That your development plan is being reviewed and updated at least once every six to 12 months. I like to advise to update it at least every six months rather than 12. Because every 12 months, a lot can happen in a year. So it's, it's really best, I think, to stay on top for six months. 12, it's, it's okay, it's not an issue, but I think it's just more manageable every six months. Activities are being added on a regular basis, a minimum of six activities per year. So those six activities per year, we ask that they are stretched across the year as well. So six activities across 12 months, not six activities in February and then nothing until next February or five activities in March and then one in September. If you can spread it across the year to show your continuous professional development, that's what we're after. You can do more than six activities, of course. Don't forget, that it does say a minimum of six activities per year. And to be honest with you, generally people do more than six. It's not an issue. As long as there is at least six, that's, that's what it looks for. And each activity added has clear reflective statements. So we just uh, just to talk about what happened within this activity, whatever it may be. Uh, so it could have been a course that you've been on. Uh, it, it could have been this webinar, for example, could be a CPD activity. A CPD activity really is some, an, an example of when you've learned something, you've picked up new knowledge in your professional career, and that's all there is to it. So if you just talk about what was experienced in that activity, that's all the auditor will be after. So the final stage is to becoming a chartered member. Once you have completed the RPD process, or I should say the first part of the RPD process, uh, and passed the CPD audit, you'll be invited to complete the peer review interview. It is the final part of the RPD assessment process and is scheduled at various locations. For international members who are unable to attend, video conference options for overseas members is available. It's £80 to visit here or £95 externally and a presentation is requested. So with regards to the presentation, I think I'll come on to that in a bit more detail in a moment because we talk about that actually in a couple of slides. But it's, it's, it's a presentation based on yourself, based on your past experiences, based on your current role and where you're headed. And only 10 minutes long. That's all there is to it. So you see there to the left side, the locations we currently have for the peer review interviews. Now it is spreading. It is getting further across the globe. You'll see if we look at the basic, as you can see, it's, it's pretty much UK based. Apart from the bottom two, you see we're now doing, doing them in Ireland and we're doing them in the Middle East. I recently carried them out in Abu Dhabi and Dubai and we're looking to stretch up to Doha. I would love it if we had a location in Central Europe, if that was something that could be put together, Switzerland, Germany, Austria, that'd be fantastic. At the moment, it's the locations we have there and for members who overseas, the video conference is available, of course, using Zoom technology. But again, hopefully in, in, in the near future, we can spread across into Central Europe and make it a bit more, a bit easier for our uh, members on the, on the continent. So the final stage is to becoming a chartered member. Preparation for the peer review interview. I should say, if anyone here listening today does have a peer review coming up or they're planning to book their peer review anytime soon or if they're just at the end of their IPD, please take note of the following piece of information. It's key, this piece of information here we've got here. So as I mentioned before, the presentation, we also ask for a record of employment. So the presentation, as I said before, 10 minutes long, five to seven slides about where you have been so how you, should we say how you got into health and safety that's really what they're looking for where you are now your current role what you manage what you do what your responsibilities are and your goals what you are aiming to accomplish or anything that's in the way at the moment that you're trying to best anything you're trying to get by and your record of employment that just spans for the past five years i should say as well the record of employment just the past five years 
Familiarize yourself with your IPD process that you took. So if you took the open assessment, think back, what questions did you get? Were they difficult? Were they easy? How did you approach it? Did you research? If you had the skills development portfolio, how did you upload your information? Was there any difficulties? Did the assessor send anything back to you? Any kind of difficulties you may experience, any, anything you found easy, did it change your way of thinking? Did you learn anything from this whole process? That's what they're going to be looking for when they're talking to you on the peer review interview. Ensure you know the four key areas or four pillars, we say, uh, of the IOSH Code of Conduct. So the Code of Conduct is RISC, Respect, Integrity, Service and Competence, Risk, RISC, Respect, Integrity, Service, Competence. You will be asked that on the day of the peer review. That is something you must you must know. We can't say what the questions are simply because we don't know what they'll be on the day, except that will happen. You will be asked what the code of conduct is. Be aware of the importance of your CPD. That simply means look back at your CPD, think about what your development plan is and what activities that you've had. Simply that. Remember, this is your peer review. I, not we, that I cannot stress that enough. Um, it's a difficult one to, to get to grips with because generally speaking, in health and safety, we work as a team. That, that's undeniable. Um, but the idea is this is your peer review. It's about yourself. Try and be as selfish as you can. Talk about what you've done, not what your team has done, not your employees, not your employers, your colleagues. It's not about them. It's about you. It's your day. The core questions are not available before the interview. Absolutely not and no notes are permitted during the interview. So you can bring notes to you on the day, but not into the interview itself. So you're interviewed by a panel of chartered members and chartered fellows. These people are volunteers. They're giving their time to assist you. They have gone through this process as well. They've sat on both sides of the table. They've been interviewed so that they're there to help you. The peer review lasts 45 to 60 minutes. That's nothing for you to worry about. That's all to do with the panel. That's their, their control. And you will hear back from us within 21 working days. Now, we do try to get to you as soon as possible, so 21 working days is the lead time. If you are successful, you are transferred to charter membership. That's as simple as that. You're transferred, you receive a certificate in the post and a chartered membership lapel badge. If you're unsuccessful, feedback will be provided. And I should, it should say that a re-interview, I missed that word, I think, may be required. It all depends on how the interview went. There is various outcomes really uh, i think that's, you should say uh, the worst case scenario is a re-interview if you've been unsuccessful there's, there's various outcomes i can't really go into it into too much detail uh, but it's it, it depends on how the interview goes and how to get started so if you wish to register on ipd simply call the number there it'd be 0044 116 257 I should have changed the amount, shouldn't I? I beg your pardon. So to register, it's 180 euros, not 160 pounds. You're given two years to complete the open, beg your pardon, the assessment process. So that does not include the CPD audit or the peer review interview. It simply includes the portfolio and or the open assessment, the two years process amount. Once you've made the payment, 24 hours later, the IP record will be available. It's not instant. It does take time to be updated online and a welcome email is sent within two hours. So that welcome email gives you all the information about your assessment process, so your portfolio, your open assessment, all the information you need. But if you want that information before paying, that is not an issue. Simply send an email to membership at inosh.com requesting whichever you, it is, or both, whichever may be, open assessment, portfolio information, and I can email that across to you. And it says there, guidance documents available when you're registered. What that then means is that when you're registered and you're online, you can take the documents yourself. You can download the PDFs online, but you can only do that once you're registered. However, like I said before, I'm more than happy to send that information to you. And that's it. So if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And of course, look at the bottom of your screen there. There's the contact information if you wish to send an email or make a call into anybody. Excellent. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much for that, Matt, uh, and I hope uh, for those of you listening that uh, it's been useful. Uh, so how this is now going to work then is uh, I'm about to add you all as panellists uh, to the session. Uh, this will give you both video and audio rights. 
Uh, for the purposes of the recorded version of this that we'll post out afterwards, uh, no video or webcams will actually be displayed, uh, but everyone will still be heard. So if you don't want to be involved in this part, uh, but you do have a question for Matt, uh, then you can ask this in writing uh, through the chat box as an alternative, uh, and I can ask this on your behalf. Uh, I'll manage the Q&A uh, to begin with, uh, and you'll all be muted. Uh, as and when you have a question, uh, if you'd like to, uh, if you can either raise your hand, uh, use the raise a hand option that will appear on your screen, or alternatively, just uh, put your hand in the air, um, and then I will come to each and every one of you uh, as and when you raise your hand in turn. Uh, I'll then be able to unmute you uh, and allow you to ask your question uh, to Matt, and we'll, we'll, we'll do it in that way. Um, so with that said, we'll go straight on to the Q&A. Uh, and I'm going to actually start this one off um, because we have had uh, a couple of questions come through. Um, so first question then, Matt, is what is the advantage of becoming chartered when you don't work in the UK or for a UK company? Well, chartered is internationally recognised. It's not UK only. Uh, we have members all across the globe. Um, I mean, you're recognised internationally, not just in the UK. It really is worldwide recognised. So uh, you can use that that recognition everywhere. It's picked up by really countries across the globe. So it's not UK based only. Uh, okay, great. Um, there is actually another one. Um, this one's just uh, been asked: uh, What is a level three qualification? Good question. So a level three qualification. Um, how to work it really, I mean, it's, it's certificate level, shall we say. Um, for those of you who have completed something such as an EBOSH International General Certificate, that is a level three qualification. There is an IOSH Safety and Health of Businesses, that is a level three qualification. Um, if you have anything you think might be that level or any other qualification for that matter, please send them in to me, membership at IOSH.com. I can take a look at that qualification for you. If I'm not certain, I can send that to our standards and qualification department and they can check that for you and see what level it is and if that's accepted. There's also a organization, I should have mentioned this to Alison, I have completely forgot, um, called NARIC. Uh, now, NARIC, they can check qualifications uh, if they are recognized over here in the UK and across Europe as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's usual to, uh, contact, uh, to contact NARIC. Okay, great. Uh, we'll just ask, uh, just before we uh, go to verbal questions, we'll, I'll quickly ask one more that's come in. Uh, and this question uh, has come in saying, uh, I'm a certified uh, safety professional by the BCSP in the US, uh, as well as a professional member of the ASSP. So what does that do for me in IOSH? Well, with the qualification, I'd like to send that across, really, because the CSP qualification, that will grant you graduate membership. As mentioned before, that is one of the routes. So send that to me. The ASSP, that's, what, that's, a, that's a prime example of one I've never heard of, but I'd love to see it. So send that across to me as well, please, and I'll see if that can do anything for your route to chart. But I can say straight away that um, if from the, it was the US, wasn't it? The BCSP, I think it was actually, that is recognized, and that will grant you graduate membership and will get you on the route to chartered. Okay, fantastic. Um, so we can now, uh, if we, we'll, we'll open up to some verbal questions. So do, does anyone actually have any, any questions they'd like to ask to begin with? Okay, Alison, uh, just ask one. Uh, so go for it, Alison. Could you talk a little bit about the CPD process that IOSH have? I know it's large and complicated, but if you could just give us a really quick overview, please. Okay, so what information do you want exactly, Alison? Do you want to go through what the purposes or what's involved or? What's involved? Okay, brilliant. So first of all, with regards to the CPD, so everyone who is, first of all, I should say, if you're an affiliate or an associate member, it's not mandatory for you to do CPD. That's a good way to start things off. So once you are a technical graduate, chartered or chartered fellow, it becomes mandatory for you to complete the continuous professional development or CPD. So to, what's involved is, first of all, to set up a development plan. Now, a development plan is what you are doing now. So what is your current job role? and your health and safety responsibilities and what your goals and objectives are in the future. So where you are now, where you're headed. I like to say, what is my today and what is my tomorrow? And then your activities. So your activities are about what you have already accomplished. So your yesterday, if you like your past. So as I said before, during the, I mentioned the CPD audit, you must have at least six activities per year for a CPD. So 
So I go over that in general, really. So you must have a development plan, which talks about what you currently do and where you're headed. And you must have at least six activities per year, which is all about what you have done, what you've completed, what you've accomplished. Now, an activity in itself is anything you have done in your health and safety career that you consider you have learned something from, you've gained some knowledge from. It can be anything at all. It can be something as huge as a diploma. It can be something as reading an article or magazine that you found particularly enlightening. You think you've really learned something from and you can put that into your CPD and just describe why it was great, what, what, what you learned from it. Okay, so it, it is reasonably complicated. Um, maybe if people want to start it, we, we need to set up. I know there's a, a particular webinar on CPD yeah. that we can... Support, uh, support people as they go through um, our IOSH Swiss network people. And, yeah, and, um, absolutely. Point um, them in the right direction because yeah. uh, um, it, it's quite quite big thing. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. What uh, Based on what Arjun just said there, if, if you are interested in um, taking part in the CPD webinar, it takes place the last Tuesday of every month. Send an email to membershipirish.com and we can book you on. Okay, I think David has a group of people who are quite keen to do it, and um, so maybe we might ask you to come back and do one specially for us. But uh, um, we'll see. Yeah, excellent. Okay, um, are there any other questions? That, uh, oh, we've got. Okay, so we've got one here, Nicholas. If you if you'd like to go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Hi, hi, Matt. Thanks Hello. for the thanks for the for the, um, the call. Um, just a question on once you have chatted member status do you have to maintain it besides doing your or besides maintaining your cpt do you have to do any particular activities to maintain it or you just you know like have it you don't have to maintain there's nothing additional you have to do to maintain the charter status nothing additional at all uh, the cpd as you stated is is uh, always continued so um what i do get asked and i think is what you're leading on to is do you have to continue doing something like ipd Absolutely not, no. Once you've got charter status, you are a charter member, and that's that. As long as you continue with your CPD, and of course, renew your membership as standard, that's it. You use your charter membership however you please, whether it be to influence or to use it to uh, change your role, whatever it may be, there's various uses for it. But no, once you're a charter member, you are a charter member. Thank you. Okay, great. Do we have anyone else who, who would actually have a, a question at all? Anyone at all, no? Uh, I mean, if we've if if we've not got any any further questions, of course, um, it sounds sounds like uh, most of whatever questions you may have had have uh, hopefully been answered already. So, um, Alison, do you want to just say a final few yeah. words before we before before we stop okay. there? Yeah, it was a great webinar. Thank you very much, Matt. I think you did answer all our questions <laughs> through that. Um, just to to let you know that if your CPD does go out of date. I can vouch for the fact that they email you repeatedly and um, <laughs> try to get you back on course. So it isn't like a, a, a sort of like wall of death where, um, oh no, I haven't done it. And it, 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 they throw you out or anything. They, <laughs> they try quite hard to keep you in. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I also wanted to say that we have some beautiful certificates um, that I can give out for if you attend webinars, if you come to our day face-to-face -face things, and they can of course be used as evidence um, when you're collecting these portfolios together. So that could be helpful. Um, and, and please do ask, because I know a bit about it. I know David knows a bit about it, and then Matt knows a lot about it. Um, so um, everyone is, is, is hoping that you want to go up this route and, and wanting to help you with that. So. Okay, thank you very much everyone for coming to the webinar, particularly to Matt for talking to us today and Ben for organising it all and uh, um, hope to see you the next one, when did I say it was, 11th of September um, to hear James Pomeroy talking about simple safety. Thank you very much yeah. everyone. Okay, well thank you very much everyone. Uh, I'll now end the meeting so uh, thank you all for attending and, and take care.